Serious, Americans who moved away from the US, what are the pros and cons of where you live now? For those that moved away, can you include how difficult it was to do so legally in the application immigration process? Move to NZ in 2012. Pros. Gosh it's a beautiful country. Had a great focus on being outdoors which I love. Kiwi culture is quite casual and easygoing, with a good amount of humor. Public healthcare is great. Even before I was eligible things were really affordable. X. I had to fill some antibiotics. $5 under when publicly funded. Before I was eligible and the chemist apologized about it being so expensive and me not getting the funded rate. It was still only $30. That was less than my co-pay back in the US. I've used publicly funded since and have had great experiences. My pregnancy and birth of my first cost me a whopping $150. That was just to cover a couple of scans and parking at the hospital. Even with my US health insurance I would have been looking at $5.10k for a normal pregnancy and birth. Employee benefits are great. 4 weeks annual leave and 11 public holidays. Maternity leave is 12 months, with 6 of those paid. Every office I've worked in has done Friday drinks, where you knock off early and they put out a spread of nibbles and beer wine. General office culture is much more relaxed than compared to corporate US. We have a pretty fair and progressive government. Lots of women leaders, PM and opposition party leaders are both women, which is refreshing to see more representation of strong women in positions of power. Cons. Housing prices are crazy. We were lucky to be able to buy, but it hurts to think how much we spend on the mortgage. We saved up for a 15% deposit in Auckland, and the amount of the deposit could have bought us a house outright in my US hometown. Thinking we'd be mortgage free in the US is a hard pill to swallow. Things are expensive in general and you don't have as much to choose from. I don't buy a lot of things, will keep my phone until it stops working, instead of getting the newest version so it doesn't impact me so much. Wages are average. I'm happy with what I earn, but I could move to Australia and easily earn 25% more with same cost of living. You're far from everywhere. Trips back to the US are long and take a lot of planning. We do have ore and lots of islands nearby for good holidays pre covid but anywhere else and it gets expensive. Move to Australia. Pros. Universal health care. Preferential voting. No community transmission of covid in my state for more than a month. Very generous legally mandated annual leave and long service leave for permanent employees. Cons. It's hot. Like super duper hot. We keep changing leaders as often as we change our socks. I keep getting geo blocked when I try to look at cool things on the internet. Yes I know VPNs exist. Video games cost $100. I once found a big spider in my bra when I went to put it on and I once found a venomous snake in my bathroom at 5am when I had a sleepy pee. Move to Japan in 2018. Pros. Affordable health care. Healthier and more active lifestyle due to walking and running for the train. Sushi. People are polite and helpful if you need help. Lowish cost of living. Always something to do, even if you live in the countryside. Living in Kansai region means easy access to cities, historical areas, and awesome nature scenery to hike in. Vending machines on every block is a godsend in the summer heat with cold drinks for a dollar. Cons. Creepy other foreigners. Had a guy from NZ try to kiss me at a club and tried to make me touch his bare chest. Creepy Japanese people exist too. Many people running to Japan thinking it's like anime. Covid support could have been better and not enough testing. Earthquakes. Typhoons. Murder hornets. Some aspects are too militant. All in all, I love living in Japan and I have no regrets. Pros. Amazing food. Kind people and no covid. Cons. Can't complain. Pollution is bad in the bigger cities. Though I really do love Vietnam. I moved to Austria in 2014. Originally came for a temporary job. Worked on my masters to stay and then married my partner who is an EU citizen. Pros. I'm currently on maternity leave. I get full pay for 4 months from the health insurance pool. Then I can take up to 3 years leave with some pay and can split some of this with my partner. Work life balance exists here. Childcare is free or subsidized. Healthcare, 
Incredibly safe. Amazing public transportation. Even though I live in a city, nature is extremely accessible. It's easy convenient to travel to other European countries. The weather is much nicer than the upper Midwest where I'm from. Rent is cheaper. The history is richer and evident. Walkability. University is free for citizens. I had to pay just under 400 euros a semester and people were always horrified to hear that. Cons. Salaries are generally lower. The inhabitants of my city are known for their grumpiness, and for good reason. Customer service is just bad. It can be hard to make friends with Austrians. Language barrier. A lot of places are cash only. I actually don't mind since most apps are free, but getting caught with no cash is a pain in the butt, and no stores are open on Sundays. Society in general is a bit more sexist than what I experienced in the states. Kids are divided into different schools, which can determine the rest of their life. After 4th grade, age 10. I lived in China for 2 years. Pros. Inexpensive. Convenient. There are a lot of places within walking distance that offers really good food. You pay with your phone everywhere. You rarely have to carry cash with you. Safe to just stroll around at night. Most stores offer next day delivery when you shop online. And the food delivery service is miles ahead of what's available in the US and at a fraction of the cost. Cons. Lots of websites are blocked. So better have a VPN ready if you want to watch P. Some of the infrastructures in some T2 T3 city eyes haven't caught up so people just park everywhere on the sidewalk and such. Food safety. You really have to be careful your delivery doesn't come out of a dingy little kitchen where they just heat up food packets or something worse. Be aware. The crime rate isn't that bad but it exists like everywhere else. Watch out for your pocket because it can be picked and in ways you would be impressed with. Moved to Uganda 8 years ago. Pros. Unless you need fancy stuff from the US Europe. All the basics are so cheap. Food, medicine, clothes, etc. People are generally friendly, welcoming, and helpful. They are very outgoing. They love kids. They are often willing to go quite out of their way to give directions or assistance. Beautiful scenery and nature all around. I drive through a game reserve to get to town. Labor is cheap. Especially in the service industry. Motorcycle taxi across town is maybe around a dollar. You can always hire someone to carry your groceries luggage bags of cement for a minimal cost and people are happy to have the work. You can bargain for everything. Literally everything. Cons. Petty theft is pretty much a given. I had a guy steal my shovel while I was resting from trying to dig a vehicle out of the mud. People will steal your phone out of your hand if you are talking in your car in traffic. The tyranny of petty bureaucrats. Submitting a complaint to the district land board recently required 13 cc's to various people. All paper. All needing to be delivered by hand. The land board doesn't have sitting fees. So they can't do anything until the govt comes through or I decide to pay them. At a previous meeting. Our issue was discussed but not resolved. But the chairman of the board would not even sign a copy of the minutes unless I paid him a bribe. Meter maids in town recently forged an unpaid parking ticket and booted my vehicle. It took an hour of hard arguing and a bribe to get it unbooted. Always an outsider. No matter how well I can learn how to speak and act, I'm white. And I will always be an object of attention wherever I go. It doesn't bug me too much, but it's tough on the kids sometimes. Being surrounded by poverty. I live in one of the poorest areas in the country, and there is basically a line of beggars at our door every day. It's really hard to know if and when to help. A dollar goes a long way here, but, speaking from experience, it's very easy to get people into a cycle of dependency which rips apart the social fabric in our community. Moved to Argentina about 4 years ago. Moving back to the US sometime next year. Pros. Life is simpler and people seem to have a lot less stress overall. Cons. I could probably go on for a lifetime, but I'll highlight the most important ones. Systems. And the organization of those systems. In everyday places such as banks, grocery stores and pretty much all public services is nearly non-existent. Even though the US can be a crap show with a lot of stuff, we've got it wired as far as efficiency with public services. At least where I'm from. I guess we have capitalism to thank for that. Also, sarcasm. Don't attack me lol. 
In the US we take a lot for granted, such as stable internet connection, as well as several businesses that offer free internet, great customer service, the list goes on. Here, you can pretty much never guarantee any of these things, and if you complain about them, nobody really does anything to solve the problem, everyone seems to have a go. Oh, yeah, well that happens sort of mindset. While the US certainly is far from perfect, I've found that the people who complain most about the US are the ones who haven't ever lived elsewhere, especially in a place much less privileged. If I've learned anything from living abroad, it's to not take for granted some of the extreme privilege I have had growing up in the US, even with its freaked up government. I've found that the people who complain most about the US are the ones who haven't ever lived elsewhere, especially in a place much less privileged. That's a bingo. Moved to Mexico right before the pandemic last year. Pros. I'm getting less and less stressed out about having to go to the doctor. I didn't realize how much I subconsciously worried about getting sick or hurt in the states until I moved here. Got an infection. Spent like 5 minutes with a doctor at pharmacy. And paid $15 for the meds I needed. I was floored. I knew before I moved that healthcare was less expensive here. But knowing it and experiencing it was somehow different. The food. The culture. The call. The language. I studied Spanish in college, so I love speaking it all the time. The people are friendly and helpful. The weather. It gets sort of cold sometimes where I live, but nothing like back home, which is nice. I hate the cold. Cons. Paperwork. I am an impatient person, so dealing with bureaucracy and making endless copies of everything that proves I exist drives me crazy. I live in a relatively safe city. But it's frustrating feeling the sense of unease about traveling to other parts of the country. I moved here with my Mexican boyfriend, which helps a lot because he understands this aspect of the country better than I do. But I miss being able to just take a road trip for no reason without worrying at all. I'm glad you like our country and I hope you eventually get to travel all around it. Had to come back because of COVID, but I plan on returning next year. Dominican Republic. I was in Santiago, which turned out to be a neat cultural zone. Pros. Lots of fantastic, high quality food and activities for cheap. The easy access to my favorite fresh favorite fruits and vegetables passion fruit, mango, purple malanga especially, is awesome. The people, while loud and annoying, are generally friendly and humble. Beautiful views and animals. I lived in a town but had hummingbirds living in the tree outside my window. Definitely cheaper to live here. My total monthly budget was around $600 for everything, including eating out in restaurants and traveling to the beach, etc. The rent for my brand new apartment was $150 a month and public transport is 60 cents. The tropical weather is friendlier on my skin. Since everything is nearby, I usually biked or walked everywhere and, combined with the awesome food, lost weight and got toned. The locals will do anything for a few bucks. I mainly asked for little things changing light bulbs, killing a particularly sinister roach, bringing up my groceries, lived on the fourth floor, heavy stuff. They loved me because I tipped generously, an extra dollar, for anything they did. Cons. Weirdly enough. The people are incredibly clean with their own homes but disgusting in public. Littering everywhere and ridiculously difficult to find a public toilet with soap or even a toilet seat are the two things that bothered me the most. Men are open perverts and sexist. I look like a local due to my Dominican descent and they were still a pain. For my blonde friends it's a nightmare. It's just not a good idea to go anywhere alone. Most things a little too casual and a bit lazy for my taste. The poor and the rich are intermingled. As a result, I can be walking down a block with mansions. And when I turn the corner, there are people barely surviving below tin can roofs. Really, really sad. A ruined place that was obviously abandoned could still be hosting a family of seven inside. Imported luxuries are stupid expensive here. Explain to me why a fair trade chocolate bar costs almost $10 here. Maple syrup is $30. Why? Giant flying roaches at night. Nuff said. I don't mind tarantulas and snakes. Can't stand roaches. Had window screens installed, laced poison under my front door, and that basically took care of it. In spite of the negatives, I loved it there. Life was simple and I led a minimalist lifestyle, and I always carried soap and pepper spray. LOL.
as a fellow Dominican looking to most likely move back to the doctor at some point, I can say that this comment pretty much covers it. One thing you gotta consider is that you'll never be a local. Your history in that country begins when you arrive. When you meet someone your age, you didn't have the same TV shows, music, toys etc. You will always be an immigrant. Also, your life in the US, or your homeland, ends. Pauses really but you're no longer living that life either. You can email your buddies and spy on their Facebook but you slowly drift away from friends and the culture. I love it, but it can be lonely at times. There's nothing that's exactly like home. Even Coke and Snickers taste different, better, but not what you remember. You become an international, and most of your friends are too because they're the ones who understand the ether you're drifting around in. You absolutely nailed the social aspect of what you leave behind when you move. I've experienced it twice. Once when moving to the US for college, and once again after moving back to my country after 4 years. It's definitely very lonely sometimes since basically your friendships start spreading around the globe and you miss out on a lot. My family moved to NZ in the 90s for 2 years when I was 12 and we're still here 28 years later. Bro, we're far removed from most of the world's problems. Con, it takes ages to get anywhere overseas other than Australia. Move to Japan. Pros. Clean cities. People generally polite in public. Good food. Quiet even in big cities. Employment options are plentiful if you're bilingual and have another skill, like IT or web design programming. Each month seems to have at least one holiday. Public transit is very convenient in big cities. Cons. Language is hard to learn. People often put on a polite air but really don't like you or don't like non-Japanese in their companies. Cities are crowded. Public transit is often very complex and hard to figure out. People all go out on vacation on holidays, making them hard to enjoy. Or companies often use those holidays as opportunities to get caught up on work. A lot of unspoken rules can affect your work and personal life and no one tells you because they assume you know them. Customer service is attentive but the customer is always right doesn't always exist. Restaurants get your order wrong and you pay full price but they apologize profusely. Returning items in stores is trickier than the US. When I lived in Japan, I quickly learned that the worst seat on the bus was the one next to me. Unless there was a black person on board and then the worst seat was next to him. I live in China. Pros. Virus is gone equals normal life. Cheap af. Earn lots. Super convenient transportation payment methods. Good food. Cons. Well, I probably shouldn't write them. They might be watching. But one for sure is being a foreigner. Everyone thinks foreigners have the virus still and they really make you go the extra mile to prove you don't. Be safe brother. Rural island for 5 years. Pros. Affordable and non-defensive healthcare. Beautiful nature. Pretty much no dangerous animals, small enough to make day trips to the big cities. Cons. Very little diversity. High cost of living. The government only cares about Dublin and Cork. A lot more sexism than I was accustomed to. Moved to the UK almost 17 years ago. Pros. Healthcare. Travel. Food. Amazon Prime. People. Cons. Being away from family. People. I put people under both. Friends are amazing. But the English are a bit more reserved. So making friends is difficult. I own an apartment. Dog two cats and within the last two years got my driver's license and a car. I also work from home full time. I wasn't there when my mom passed away but was for my dad. My aunt and uncle are hinting at moving to Portugal which would be awesome as it's a 2 hour flight. Move to Sweden. Pros. Healthcare. Man. Takes a while to get in the system. But it's buttery smooth after that. Even paying out of pocket here is cheaper than good insurance in the US. 20-30 plus days paid vacation. I don't even know what to do with that much vacation. Jesus Christ. Almost as many sucks days as you want. Just don't be a dong about it. Public transportation. It exists. Didn't exist where I came from. Weather. I love the cold. Summer can be bad. If it's 80 plus outside. There is no AC. And the sun will be out for a long time. Lots of modernization. Everything is tied to your SSN. Little scary. But you update your phone address at one place and all your bills and such will get to the right place. 
The people are super nice and pretty smart. You can have a good conversation with just about anyone. Healthy food. It's mind blowing how unhealthy American food is in comparison. Easy language. Swedish might be the easiest language for an English speaker to learn. Everyone speaks English so it can be hard to learn to speak it if you don't have a dedicated practice group. Beautiful landscape. If you like trees. Cons. Weirdly conservative about certain issues. Drugs alcohol especially. Trains suck. Always late. Sometimes they just don't come at all. If you don't like bread, the food is a bit underwhelming. Licorice. You have to know someone on the inside to make anything happen. Looking for a job? Way easier if you know a guy who knows a guy. Looking for a place to rent? Impossible if you don't know a guy who knows a guy. Pay is on the lower side. I could easily make double in the US what I do here. Don't care cause I like the benefits way more than the extra money. Minimum wage is way better here. Though. Cost of living can be high. Sales tax is way higher here. My condolences if you end up needing a car. Renting an apartment is impossible. They love condos for some reason. Can take 10 plus years to find a place to rent. People don't talk to you. 4 plus years and there has been maybe 2 times that someone just walked up and had a conversation. Can't even remember the last time someone said hi. Very hard to meet people and make close friends if you're not incredibly outgoing. Swedes are very respectful and don't want to bother you. They'll become acquaintances in an instant but it will take years for them to go beyond that. The country does not work if you don't have a full social security number. Great place to live. I'd only consider giving it up for Canada. If you want to get into Sweden the best bet is to be some kind of programmer. Ideally web stuff. And you gotta know someone on the inside. Other than that you gotta find a Swedish significant other. Expect extreme wait times with migrations. Australia. Come over in 1978 from USA age 22 for 6 months holiday. Still here. Pros. Quality of life is better. Healthcare. Less people. Made firm friends very easily. Did not have to learn a new language, however the slang did stump me at first. Better wages and I am not a professional. Much more laid back lifestyle but that could be because I do not live in a major city. Cons. I really cannot think of anything I would say as a negative. I live in a regional town. Cairns. Northern beaches. Love the weather. Love the heat. Love the ocean. Move to Germany. Pros. Healthcare. Social safety nets. Apartments. There are rules where everything has to be repainted and be clean. Tilt windows. The US has no idea how awesome these are. Public transportation. Lower fixed costs. Autobahn. No police state troopers pulling you over for speeding. Or 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 speeding, 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 or speeding. Cons. People will publicly shame you for breaking the rules. Old people that cut in line at the bakery. Cash society. Cash still rules everything around them. Construction on every part of the autobahn. Traffic cameras everywhere. Entitled little man children. Young German men act like they can get away with being buttholes without getting punched in the mouth. Because they've never been punched in the mouth. Can't shop on Sunday. Lived in Manaus, Brazil for a good while. Pros. 1. Decently low cost of living. Come from rural Midwest so my mind is based on that. 2. Work is relatively easy to come by even if you don't have a college degree. 3. Free public healthcare with option of paid private. 4. Free public university with option of paid private. 5. Pretty great workers benefits. I.e. Guaranteed 30 days vacation. Child care. Maternity leave. 
healthcare. Obviously different workplaces will have different benefits but it's basically standard. 6. An absolutely crazy amount of nature. I drive 2 hours out of the city and I'm in the middle of the rainforest. Most beautiful place I've ever been. 7. Friendliest people I have ever met. Never had any problems with people. Possible con is there isn't much concept of personal space so if that's important to you then I'm sorry. 8. Sexy sexy people. Cons. 1. Hot all the time. At least in northern Brazil. Southern gets more temperate. Think 95F every day. 2. Rain almost every day. Dry season doesn't mean dry. It just means less wet. 3. Can't flush toilet paper. 4. If you're not born there it's usually a bad idea to drink any tap water. 5. Once had a 10 inch tarantula land on me while I was pooping. 6. Crime is pretty bad in some places. If you're not dumb it shouldn't affect you but people go to places they shouldn't. 7. Traffic. Once took me 2.5 hours to travel about a mile. Searched way too long for this. I'm glad you're enjoying our country. Hot bless you. Australia. I'm actually in the US right now and kind of stuck here due to personal reasons in the pandemic. But we still have our Australian home and will be heading back as soon as travel restrictions lift. Pros. Almost everything. Seriously though, other posts have covered this but good salaries, better work-life balance with a more leisure-focused culture, guaranteed vacations and healthcare, retirement system with minimum 9.5% employer contribution, fantastic quality of food, even basic supermarket stuff tastes so much better than the US, and pretty nice weather for most of the country, rank choice voting nationally, and elections run by an independent electoral commission who also sets district boundaries according to a neutral data driven formula. Oh and essentially covid free air right now. 7 stroke 8 states had 0 cases yesterday. The one remaining state had 3 cases. Cons. It's smaller and more isolated markets so if consumerism is your thing, you'll find less variety of goods and services. Fewer options for things like streaming services. Though with VPN and a valid foreign address most of that is a non-issue. Certain things like cars and appliances are more expensive. Opening hours for stores are shorter and deliveries from Amazon etc. are a bit slower. You may also find salaries in certain industries are a bit lower than the US. Though still pretty good by global standards. But overall the pros vastly outweigh the cons. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.